flow experiment. Here's our mass flow meter. It's measuring it in liters per minute at standard standard temperature, temperature and pressure. So you have to understand what that is. Um, it's, it has a range from 0 to 30. Your experiment may not be in that range, but that's why we extrapolate sometimes. This is how you turn it on. This is the power source. Um, as you can see, there's... I don't know where... No, it's at 0. Okay, yeah, that's accurate now. It sometimes doesn't... It takes a little while to get to steady state. This here is a temperature probe. Uh, what do you call those? Thermocouple. This is our pressure regulator. This is where the pressure, the air comes in. Around the corner, if you, as you follow the yellow, goes to a, a gauge, which is 80 PSI. Um, these are pressure measurements, right? This is the, you open it like this, you pull, you have to learn it every time apparently, I can't remember. Did I pull it up? Yeah. It just goes up like this. Let's turn it. Turn it. Pull up and turn it. Counterclockwise. So it's all the way off now. It's reading zero. And as you turn, you get past a certain point and it'll start moving. So the reason why it's choked flow is because it the air flows through this orifice, which is a square edge. That's what we've been told. We've never seen it, but it's a square edge. It's one millimeter in diameter. That we had to look that up, so that's good to know. This is the valve. As I turn this, it um, increases or so decreases it depending. It changes the downstream. It changes the downstream pressure. It's not all I'm just gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, anything else on this. Okay, so you can take control of the experiment by by going to the choked flow experiment in the UL Lab webpage, and then clicking on View and Control, and you have to right click up here and request control of the system, and then you can see your different readings here, and as we turn this on. Okay, as we open up our downstream pressure nozzle, so you can see the downstream pressure changing a little bit. Oh, we open this all the way, that's why. Okay. And when you're ready to record data, you just reinitialize, and then you just hit push record. What browsers work? Um, you, you use... You don't use Chrome, use Firefox or Internet Explorer, but Chrome is no good. So, and then you just collect your data like this, however many points you're going to take, and then you can just adjust your nozzle to change your pressure difference between your upstream and downstream, and then take more data points if you need, or whatever. And then you go to the bottom of the page here. Just scroll to the bottom and select the get data file. Open it up and it will pull up and download it. You'll have to, it'll say it doesn't match if you just hit yes and it'll pull it up. And these are the data points that we just took all the times I clicked it. And it should reset to zero when it's first. Uh, when you reinitialize everything completely, it hasn't been for us. Ever since we started, it has just kept going up 611,000 seconds ago. Um, so, and you can take your data from there. Okay, so tell me um, any other things that you guys wish you would have known just starting off this experiment? Yeah, one thing. Um, you get a lot of noise in the data. Um, especially for lower pressures that can become problematic and so you really want to make sure that the flow meter and the lab view both match in their reading and are both fairly consistent. Um, even after we let it go to steady state there's still a lot of noise in the reading 
Um, but to remedy that, this is nice because you can just click the button a lot of times and take a lot of data. And so that's helpful in uh, minimizing the effect of, of all the noise in the measurement.